Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in last week's Saturday video we would have talked about ridging and rotaving. So in this week's video we're just going to focus on the planting end of it and the destoning end Before of it. Before we get started don't forget to subscribe to this video. So in today's video you're going to meet Paul, Niall Flanagan, John Battlesby and Caleb and finally Stephen Mayer. So we're just here now with Niall Flanagan who's in the Manitou Teleporter. Uh, Paul reckons he is the most important job by planting the potato but I reckon Niall does areas to tipple in the potatoes into the hopper. So what variety are and what we got here now? So we're in Kerpings here today now and Luke and uh, just tipping this box in here now. I need to need to make sure I get this part right yeah. now. Don't want any on the ground. No, no. Well, you'll be getting the backhand. We'll be getting the back of the hand. Look at that. Beautiful. So we try to let them in as easy we can, as we can. Make sure we don't bruise any of them because mm. the bruise will not grow. Exactly. You and wouldn't grow if you were bruised, no, would you? No, definitely not. <laughs> and uh, we might try and make sure we have no spillages either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy yeah. stuff now. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah. Niall's kind of the logistics manager. He, you probably don't recognise the accent. He's a rush common man, true and true. So he's up here for his Easter break and. Yeah, you make sure all the seed comes to the field and the pods oh, kept full and double jobbing. Double jobbing. Two triple babies jobbing. over there. Yeah. He's a bit tilling and rope baiting then when he's free. Right, I'm going to hop down here before you kill me. Yeah, no bother. Good luck, good luck. So, as Niall fills the panda with spuds, we have other Niall O'Reilly filling up his tractor with Ad Blue. Uh, Phil. Well, no, that's crack. Government juice. Government juice. So Ad Blue, it's, it, it's a. It's a hoax, so it is. Oh, yes, that is Charlie in behind and the roll barrels you would have seen last week. He wants government juice as well, I think. Oh, I think so. Get it here, get it gone. And Ida's in the 175 with the Machio Ripper. Yeah. I don't know why he's wearing gloves. It's a bit soft, that lad. What's the gloves for, Nile? Uh, a bit soft, no? Uh, keep the tractor clean, you Keep know? the tractor clean. Keep the hands clean, that lad. Some say he's allergic to dirt to <laughs> It's a rash. So you can see the tippler there has the two forks underneath to take the weight of the box and then a side fork and a top fork so when you flip it, it holds the box so that obviously you don't want the box falling into the planter. So we're just in the first of 3D stoners now with John Battersby's in the, his famous 6920S, my tractor as he calls it and his destoner as he calls it. So uh, John, give us a definition of why we destone. Basically to it makes lovely bedded clay, as you can see, fine. Yeah. Takes the stones out, yeah. moves them across into the alley beside you. Yeah. And when you're coming back down, then you drive on top of the alley. If you show it there, Carl, you can see where the stones are, and we're driving on top of it. Yeah. And that also allows for drainage because the it allows for drainage. Rain will get away. Yeah. It just it's just for the that the potatoes don't get damaged then when they're being. Yeah, because you can imagine growing in the middle of a heap of stones, and yeah. it just wouldn't be the nicest thing, no. would it? Not nice. So, yeah, we have three Grimmity stoners, which you probably would have seen in Workshop Wednesday. Grimmy have they done a good bit of work on two of them, and then we looked after one ourselves. Yeah. John looked after her. Yeah. Can you, John? Yeah, that's why you're all, yeah. Only, only man for the job. Look at her, look. She's, look, she's flying there, humming away. Now, if I get into it, it'd probably break. It just knows John. It only likes John. But, uh, I know they're going well, going well enough so far. Yeah, 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 no, they're going well. And you have two apprentices with you? Yeah, one, uh, well, one of them is on his second year. His second phase, I'd say, yeah. is his third phase, maybe? Well, the other lad is only on his fourth year. Yeah, 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 well, it's his first day on it, so. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, no, he is. Young know, Stephen Martin there, you would have met him in one of the videos as well. And then Caleb was our second phase apprentice. He was on it last year, but he fairly has the hang of it. Ah, he's good, yeah. Mm. No, 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 actually, he's not. He's not. He'd be watching this, John. Oh, will he? Oh, yeah, no, he's not great. No, he's actually not great now. So the land up here is in Lucan, and it's very good clay, isn't it? Yeah, it's going well. A little bit stony, but. A bit glazed. You're going to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not wet, anyway, that's the main thing. No, it's not way light after the rain we had the other day. Yeah, like they rained the goods up there the other day, but it's dried up quick enough. Yeah, it's not bad. It's grand there today. Yeah, yeah. perfect. 
So John, the big important question, how many years are you doing this job de-stoning? Do you want, really want to know? Yeah, yeah, tell everyone. 35. Yeah. <laughs> 35 years. So if you want to go to stone a man, get to John, because I'd say he's came across every problem in stone and every shape of stone in the world. <laughs> in, in, the Mead, in County Mead and Dublin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loud. Hardy. Loud, yeah. And another fun fact about John is he is also a spud farmer all his life too. Yeah. His father grew spuds. His brother grows spuds. Yeah. So John is busy with the spuds, so he knows them more than a lot of lads. Well, so he says. No, I didn't say that, uh, you did. No, that's, that's what you say. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll leave John at it. I'm going to hop in with Caleb now and see where he's at, because I don't know if it'll be as handy as the work that John's doing. Mm. John's yeah. over this side of the field, and he sent the lads over there, and I think it's very stony over there, but I don't know, John. John I think that was a clever move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very experienced. experienced. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the stony spots. <laughs> right. Hello, how are you? Awesome. How are we? That's a story. It's just lovely to see you in the workshop, not in the tractor. Yeah, I know, it's unusual to see me driving hunting nowadays, but look, it's nice to get a, nice to get a break too yeah, from yeah, yeah. inside in the workshop. See the sunlight. Hi, ah, exactly, you don't get to see much sunlight inside in the shade. No, 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 especially when you're buried under a tractor as well. Ah, yeah. You definitely don't see it. So, this is your second, third? Third, yeah, no, third, yes. I'm going to give him phase 3 actually instead, sorry, I messed up saying phase 2. But, uh, <laughs> yes, phase, phase 3 of the phase store three, right, house, yeah. so. And then phase 4 you get your, your fully qualified, <laughs> and you get a certificate and all. Yeah, Don't exactly. Don't be against the handy as well. Yeah, exactly, qualified the store man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you have your 6930 auto yeah. power. Aye, ah, exactly, this is the first year now we've ran this tractor. I had a the uh, power, the, yeah. another 1630 but it was a power quad one last year and that was a grand tractor but it's nice to have the auto power, that's the yeah. biggest thing about that. Yeah, because you don't want to be split gears or yeah, you pick, a, pick a speed and away you go. Ah, exactly. It you know, keeps the revs the same then as well. Yeah, because with the power shifts, a gear was either too fast or too slow and you never get the right gear but with this I could just keep pushing it on, keep it full up, keep, keep the bike on the and the bed teller on the flash on. Yeah, yeah, he's sweating over that. <laughs> Charlie, who you would have seen in last week's video if you were watching that one. And then, cheers, look at this man, Nine Flanagan. Good dog, there you come from. doing a bit of rope as well. <laughs> Coming in to give a hand. Yeah. So he's kind of double job in there. He's, oh look, he sees us now with the lights. <laughs> he's helping Dad out and he's also doing a bit on the side. Bit of a nixer. Keeping the show on the road. Keeping the show on the road, only for us. We would we'd never be able to find spuds today, would we? No, no. It's the logistics manager as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making sure we seed and all that. So another benefit of having Caleb in the field is that if something does break down, at least we have someone reliable to fix it because she couldn't trust Dad because he was loose nuts here and everywhere. Road, and break and then bats me, what big a light bulb, never made a tractor. Oh, here. Yeah. And then the young lads then on top of it too. Young lads be the worst. I don't know, I wouldn't be able to hold a spanner, I just know how to hold the camera. That's all I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It wouldn't be great as a camera, but at least I could hold a spanner. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Ah, it's, it's nice to be able to see how everything works too, which is the biggest right, thing. Right, we'll head across then to Stephen Martin, who probably is under a bit of pressure, so I, the job. Yeah, we I think all so. remember it. I tell you, the sweat was pumping out of me the first day. Oh, Lord, dude. <laughs> and it wasn't even warm. <laughs> oh, right, we'll see what he's at. Ah, oh, see if he's Kevin. coping then, yeah. Good luck. So we're here with the first day of friends with Stephen Martin. How are you going? <laughs> so how's it all going with Stephen? You seem to be under a bit of pressure. How's this sitting now? It's going to hear myself think. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's going well. Um, we're just doing a bit of East Dawn here today. For yeah. second day in on the job, but yeah. sure, we're going, we're going well enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away from the cattle anyway. Oh, thanks be to God, yeah. Thanks be to God. Poor Jack so, there, slaving away. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it all going in here? Going well, well, yeah. Um, There's a lot to be thinking about, isn't it? There is. There's a good few controls here, as you can see, but uh, no, it's grand when you get in on the, it's grand when you get in on the main row, but uh, it's turning in and out is a bit tricky, kind of a lot of yokes to remember. Um, and then, just on the straight, and it's just keep an eye on your wheels that they're not driving on the 
On the beds. On the beds. Yeah, and the stones are hitting the middle, middle Yeah, the not, not too much coming out of the elevator. Basically, if there's too much coming out of the elevator, slow her down. And if there's not enough, give her gears. Give her gears. Uh, can't give her gears, but give her a bit of speed. Give her a bit of stick, yeah. <laughs> this is all to the all power the Heaven A10, as I call it naturally. This is my baby. So I pass it on from generation to generation. <laughs> right, so I'm going to do a hefty thing here now, but I'm going to report to you and then it is sums it out. It's some under pressure now, but there's about 100 minutes right coming out now. So lift her up now, play off the video at the same time. Push the ditch. I haven't as good as the lock as the boys, so oh, yeah, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. to back. go well. Now it's actually smooth enough and your ins and outs are nearly perfect. It's good, was it? Yeah. Only the best. Can't be complaining. So. Nobody goes wrong with the camera, but perceiving in this case went right from Good man under pressure. So we're just planting our care pinks here in this field here. There's just over 50, 50 acres in the field here and we have this field to do and maybe some of the other ones in there. Wouldn't be that kind of popular, the care pinks as a variety, mostly rooster that we grow but you know they're still they're an old variety and we have a market for them so for that reason we, we just grow them. It's only it's only this field will grow the whole season. Yeah, yeah, that'll be it. There'll be nothing else. Everything else will be roost or maybe a few early uh, queens that you would have seen in some of the last videos. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's going well here. We just have a... Yeah, the, the four-row planter. We'll just talk through that. So, it was new last year. Yeah, we got the four-row planter last year. We had a couple of two-rows before that. We were running two two-rows machines. And look, it, it done the job. But uh, these four-rows have come out in the last maybe three years. And last year we decided to buy one because I do most of the planting myself and we had another guy doing them. He only trusts himself, that's the yeah, main so reason. I just said, look, it's the grief. I'll do it all myself, I'll do it all myself. So now I can do it all myself, but uh, I have to say, an absolute fantastic machine. So easy and graceful when you're in the field and to cover ground, you know, I had to keep these Gistona men busy there. They yeah. Think. They, just, they, they hate to see me coming into the field. They think of the hip down there after lunch, but I just wiped this out here in no time. So. Yeah, yeah, they'll be sweating again. I can get up to speeds there. You can plant up to speeds there in around the 7k. I have it set there for 8k sometimes, depending on the seed. As you can see here from the cameras, they hope this is the four different planting elements on it. Now, it's um, traditionally planters had the World Cup planters, but now these are all bell planters in where the spuds kind of follow each other. As you can see, they're coming down the row here and uh, there's a sensor on the front of the where it drops the video and it's calibrating and sensing there how far apart the video should be so it, it wants to maintain that same spaces all the time and you can see it here on the <coughs> on this other control panel here 39 40 and 40 so i have it set at 40 centimeters there so it can it's automatically trying to achieve that space in every time yeah so you're setting them that far apart yeah because they need space to grow obviously but if you had rooster you'd set them even further apart would you well we can yeah it, it depends you know the further apart you, you plant them at the start of the year the, the generally will they might produce the same numbers uh, of tubers but you might be able to harvest it crop that bit earlier because you'll have more size in it so yeah it'll be bigger <coughs> so we just need a little bit of size on these care pinks and we just plant them that bit farther apart, apart. They're, they're a slight bit different to a rooster where our kerspings generally will grow down um, where rooster will kind of grow up so we don't don't plant them very very deep so we have a set in there which we will show you when we have have them when we open up the drill we can see the different settings that we have um, for the different potatoes so yeah so that Pander, how, how many tonnes does the hopper hold? Yeah, well, Niall is just after filling me there with, uh, with three ton, with three boxes, which is in around the three ton now. Give or take, <coughs> you know, we generally say you plant a ton per acre, which is a box per acre. So that should ask me for about three acres again. I can say it here on the on the top there. That's another benefit of four row that you're not going in the whole time and looking for boxes. Cause yeah, yeah. I well, remember that's what I grew up doing. When I was yeah, so if I, if I had one guy here all the time, he'd be flat out just keeping two of them going. But actually, sometimes I'm able to keep myself going. I'm able to tip over to the yard, which is only over there. Yeah, and, and I'm able to fill up, up myself. You're up catching <coughs> them, 
no mad panic on you, but you're still covering the same acres that you were doing a few years ago with two two rows. Yeah, no, I have to say it's, it's it just has made the job so simple for us because you can just fly across the ground and get it done real quick and uh, it's given little now some of the earlier models did give a little bit of problems there uh, with the grimy ones but this one now i have to say it's just bang on every time <clears throat> and then another benefit with the four row planter is we could go four row harvester yeah yeah you so, have to yeah so the four row planter the harvester is going to follow that same four rows that we uh that we plant so that has been a great but the planting element of this is is, is kind of it wants to keep itself level so we're even going uphill or downhill the planting element will constantly keep level and if i go into my b screen here it'll show me here where it's, it's actually leveling the the, the the planting element all the time so it keeps a constant feed of potatoes to the to the element um, it never over floods it or never uh, starves it so it's just constantly all the time the potatoes are lying in one after the other in front of them and you see on the front of it there there's a little kind of a sponge roller on it and the purpose of the sponge roller is to just to tighten the potatoes up in the line that little bit more if you're depending on the size of your seed there you can say it so it works very well on this then i have everything in auto i mean when i come to the headland i have a different joystick here just specifically for the for the planter and I can row in and row out and what that does is the row in function lets you when I press the button down it will go down it will level the steering will go straight so it does all them functions for me on the row in and then I also have my steer here on this joystick as well so I can steer it from left to right I can lift the planter up manually on the front manually up and down from the back as well and then on the button the back button here I can actually tip the hopper now his um, automatically tips itself so if you can see I'll, ra I'll raise it up there that's manually but as as the planter the seed goes down in the planter it the uh, tip it automatically tips up just to keep the elements yeah it cold. senses that it's empty yeah, yeah so it's simple so enough now we're just going to get out and examine what he's actually doing in the row itself yeah so the most important thing i know it should everything should be right here on, on the screen and on the camera but there's in one, reality, there's, there's only one. Check and someone's robbed me gloves then along with that. <laughs> Niall Flanagan, I'd say, has he? <laughs> so that's the four runs, or four drills we have to create and they're coming down. Now we're just going to check. So as you can see, after going through the distorion, there's lovely and, and loose soil there. There's one there. Yeah. Right, okay, so that one must have been there. And that one was there. And that one is here. So they're a nice, uh, nice distance apart. Again, the distance then will say from the top of the drill that the bidet is important. Uh, as we said, the pinks want to grow down, so there needs to be a lot of nice loose clay underneath them. And if we dig down there, you can see we've loads of loose clay there as well. So that's really a perfect height there underneath, and it gives them plenty of uh, scope then to go down a little bit further. So we'd be happy with that. And then obviously in terms of the row itself, you need them bang on. Yeah. You want yeah. to be aiming center. Yeah, they all have to be in the center. So that's the purpose of the opener say on the front of it. It's just to, it creates a little line, a little open we'll say in the clay. And then this potato will, because it's fallen from a nice little height, it's probably fallen, maybe not quite a meter, but not too far away from, and it's going to fall down like that. So basically it needs to, a little slot to go into. So that's the pur purpose of the openers. Um, but, Lovely clay there, and you'll see on the distoners the way the yeah, and then the hoods at the back just kind of compact the clay around it. Uh, yeah, it's good surface. Yeah, well, you can get different kind, but some of them are um, can be more around. We have one with a flat top on it. Uh, the idea that of the flat top is sometimes when it does rain, a little bit more moisture will go down into the drill there, and it'll it'll uh, it'll retain more moisture in the soil or in the drill because the year is long for the. For the bidet and there will be and the summers it. are getting dry yeah so. summers are getting dry so you need to keep as much soil or moisture retention in the, in the drill as we can um but and yeah. their gps bang on straight as well well they're fairly straight I just, that's carl's job but if they're not straight it's his his problem i've got already <laughs> out of it once or twice already but look we've, we've mastered it since so just before the video finishes um i just want to mention the tractor run it's happening on the 16th of april which is goods or easter saturday uh registrations from 1 to 2 p.m in kiltail hurling pitch in county mead so 
It's, yeah. uh, it's set up by Connor there and it's for Irish Cancer, and Cancer Society. So it's for a really good uh, charity there, lads. Get a tractor, vintage car, anything at all. Get Bicycle. down there, support. Hopefully we'll be some. We'll have a, a few uh, a few tractors involved as well. Uh, most of them are here in the spot field today, but yeah. uh, as you can see, doing their own tractor on today. We might get a few of the old girls there, and they might do that job. So get a tractor and get down there and support a very good cause. So, <laughs> so another job we're doing on Finnegan's Farm today is we are letting the cows and calves out to grass. So these calves have never seen grass before. I uh, hope we'll do the honour of going in the back of them. And then we have the mothers in the tra other trailer, so we let them in now. And they're all happy. Hubble is just delighted today. Everything's going perfect. <laughs> all according to plan, isn't it, Hubble? Just let us in there and look. So Hubble is in the best of form because the calves actually ran through the fence there and he was left running. He was running about 100 miles an hour up that, up that pass there. It was the funniest thing ever. Oh God, I got some laugh over. He was not happy after. So that's all from today's video. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, hope all the planting goes well for us for the rest of the season. And we'll see you all next week. Good luck.